Usually I'm not a fan of big modern architecture boxes in major cities. I think it, so it takes away from the charm, it takes away from the character, but in Oslo it's different. What's up guys? Welcome back to A Sense of Travel. I'm Michael Mathena, and I'm on a mission to document the sights, sounds, tastes, feels, and smells of cities, countries, and natural landmarks around the world. This week, I'm in Oslo, Norway, where my brain can't decide whether it's gonna hyperfixate on the Frozen soundtrack or Norbert the Norwegian Ridgeback from Harry Potter. Either way, I'm excited to bring you along. So let's get started. I should start this video by saying this. I absolutely loved Oslo. This vlog is a bit longer than my typical adventure, but the Norwegian capital was so captivating that I simply couldn't leave anything out. Oslo is the capital of Norway, but that doesn't mean it's a big city. While it has the perks of a city much larger than its size, like a nice metro system, world-class museums, art galleries, sculpture parks, Olympic stadiums, and performance halls, Less than 700,000 people live in Oslo proper, with roughly 1.5 million in the entire metro area. The result is an elegant, clean, landscaped metropolis, which happens to be set alongside the mouth of a fjord in a country with some of the most beautiful natural landscapes in the world. Among other reasons, it's no surprise that Norwegians are some of the happiest people on the planet. To capture Oslo in top 10 lists, bullet points, or infographics like many travel vlogs attempt to isn't possible. Experiencing Oslo imaginatively requires a full immersion into all five senses. Today, my goal is to bring you along for the ride in a way that makes you feel the magic, comfort, and serenity of the Oslo experience too. So let's get started. Oslo's old city center, known as Centrum, is the heartbeat of the city. Designed in a grid dating to the 15th century, Oslo's blocks of classical buildings are very colorful. The color palettes on the plaster facades range from pastels, cool grays, and blues, to richer colors like golden yellow, rustic red, and even pops of purple and lavender. Breaking up the colors, many of the blocks are filled with simple brick from the 20th century and metallic and glass finishes from more recent years. In fact, there's quite a bit of densely packed, intriguing, and quite unique modern architecture in the city's downtown. To place yourself imaginatively in the cobbled centrum streets, imagine the dense blocks of colorful, classically designed buildings mixed in with brick and occasionally postmodern design. As you look up, the occasional big aged bronze dome pops out. The chilly, dry spring air breezes through your hair as you stroll. Glancing over at the various shops, cafes, restaurants, and markets. As you pop in and out of the small shops, you'll notice a lot of Norwegian flags a lot of items themed to Mies, and mythological forest trolls. The impressively clean streets are filled with the sounds of birds chirping, tram lines, and construction noises. As for the smells... You know, it's interesting wandering through downtown because even though we're in the heart of a major city, it still smells woodsy and fresh um, and, and like trees. <laughs> And a little bit modern, right? You know that smell that modern buildings can give off? The metal, the concrete, a little bit of that. But for the most part, it's a very fresh smelling place. Interestingly, there aren't any skyscrapers per se, just a couple of tower high rises. That said, there are a ton of cranes on Oslo's skyline. Very clearly, it's growing. While Centrum is adorned with beautiful, classical and ornate buildings such as the National Theatre and the Norwegian Parliament, one of the most fascinating structures dates back much further. Try 600 years. Akersa's Fortress, 
towering on a hilltop that overlooks both Centrum and the Oslo Harbor, is a medieval castle fortress built for Norway's royal line. Old, cobbled streets, plaster white buildings in dark clay shingled roofs, moss covered boulders, and the brick castle fortress topped in an aged steeple await behind the stone gate. Huge gray stone walls and buildings with clay bricks and painted half timber designs built into diagonal shapes make up a great deal of the fortress. To place yourself imaginatively into the space, first, you need to picture yourself walking along cobbled streets and avoiding horse crap at all costs. But on a more serious note, it's a really peaceful atmosphere this early in the morning. It's like 9.30. Imagine the stone buildings, the old medieval brick, the sounds of birds chirping, the occasional landscaper, the warm morning sun, which is surprising because we're in Norway, <laughs> and just a sea of greenery around you. As you climb to the top of the hill in the fortress, it smells like fresh earth and grass and flowers. You can see the city skyline and the hills and the fjords surrounding. And it's a very peaceful, calm atmosphere. The grounds of the Acker House Fortress smell almost minty. Like it's weird. The roof lines vary from aged light green bronze turrets to terracotta clay roofs and black ceramic tiles to the old metallic church steeple. Atop the hill, on one side of the complex, you see a modern and rather boxy downtown area behind the deep dark water of the Oslo Fjord. On the other side, ornate domes topped with spires over a sea of the more classical looking buildings in Centrum. Oslo's landmarks aren't all old, however. In fact, one structure stands out from a surprising era, the 1950s. Is it really a famous European landmark if it's not half covered in scaffolding? Questions that need answers. Oslo City Hall is a mid-century masterpiece with two towering high-rise wings connected by a central atrium. Built with dark brown brick, there are golden statues and granite insets adorning the facade. Beautiful wooden art sculptures of Nordic mythological stories called friezes are carved and inset into the bricks in the entrance courtyard. The stories are intriguing, walking through the ancient Norse stories of human creation. There are even more impressive friezes awaiting inside, but We'll get to those in a bit. There's so much more to Oslo than its old town, and the experience only gets deeper from here. Part of the magic and the, the mystery that makes up the Oslo experience is Norwegian folk culture itself. At the Norwegian Folk Museum, you can dive into the mythology, the folklore, and just the overall history of the country in an immersive way. For example, I just went into a house and got fed a pancake right off the skillet. It was pretty great. An open-air museum reminiscent of Skansen in Stockholm, the Norwegian Folk Museum takes you on a walk through centuries of urban and rural Norwegian life via multiple authentic old villages complete with houses, churches, pharmacies, schools, and shops. Wooden houses were, and still are, common in Norway outside of Oslo itself, and the museum carries wafts of aged wood as a result. Speaking of wood, the centerpiece of the museum is a sight to behold, the Old Stave Church. This wooden structure, dating to the 1200s, is a medieval Norwegian masterpiece. Clearly inspired by the Viking era, this church is adorned with beautifully preserved ornate wooden carvings and murals. Dimly lit and slightly chilly, it smells deeply of aged wood. Just north of Centrum, you'll find a lush, green park centerpieced by Norway's royal palace. A bit plain and smooth, the creamy yellow palace is graced with a classical, there's that word again, columned portico, reminiscent of the White House or Buckingham Palace. 
In many ways, I'd describe Oslo's neighborhoods as looking quite romantic. For example, Hilthusbakken Street is gorgeous, peaceful, and picturesque. Dozens upon dozens of small garden plots overlooked by classic Scandinavian wooden houses. Usually I'm not a fan of big modern architecture boxes in major cities. I think it, so it takes away from the charm, it takes away from the character, but in Oslo it's different because in Oslo you have these really interestingly designed buildings and then in the background you have the hillsides topped with houses and villages and the Fjord out in the, in the harbor. And then in the distance, you've also got the old beautiful bronze domes of old cathedrals and old royal halls. Oslo blends these things together so well that the city does feel like it has a sense of identity and character. It's very different than places like Charlotte, North Carolina, which if you know me, you know I can't stand. This place has preserved its, its history and identity and has really paved the way forward with really breathtaking modern architecture to blend it together. I visited Oslo in the springtime, which means that instead of the icy, snow-covered streets that many imagine when they picture the Norwegian cities, this city was blanketed in green. Oslo is surrounded by rolling hillsides covered in various types of greenery and what appear to be villages of densely packed homes. In the distance, you see even taller hillsides covered in a hazy mist. The water in the harbor almost looks black. Across the water, and accessible only by ferry, are a series of islands, the closest of which is Hovedoya. As you imagine yourself preparing for the boat ride across the cool Nordic water standing by the docks, imagine the sense of old wooden ships and docks, fish, and salt water. Cruising across the harbor to Hovedoya reminded me a ton of crossing the Puget Sound in Seattle. Once safely across, you're greeted by an absolutely gorgeous nature preserve. Towering bright green trees blanketed the lush island, littered with dirt trails. If I am to find any trolls in Oslo, it'll be in here. At the trail's end are mossy boulder-lined beaches of dark sand and icy Nordic water. Here, you'll notice that only the sounds of crashing waves, birds chirping, seagulls crying, and boat horns fill the soundscape. As you climb toward the top of the rolling hillside, the scents of dirt, rocks, and grass enter your nostrils. The boulder formations on the island are quite intriguing. It seems as if they were turned sideways and striped. Nature's wild. Also on the island are some of Norway's best preserved medieval ruins. This is a 12th century monastery. Well, what's left of it? The ruins are navigable and smell of old, damp stone. All things considered, an Oslo-scented candle, were I to make one, would include aged wood, wild flowers, grass, and salt water. The entirety of Oslo, and Norway in general for that matter, feels like an art canvas. Art in Oslo, specifically, can be found in nearly every corner. So, you might be familiar with a portrait of a person who looks like they're screaming with their hands on their face, called the scream. Well, the artist, Munch, is from Oslo, Norway. Today, I'm heading to a museum dedicated to all of his works, so let's go check it out. The modern, soul-search-evoking Munch Museum is really an embodiment of Munch's expressive and often tense art capturing the human experience. Alongside famous works such as The Scream, Munch's dark motifs of death and uncertainty mix with lighter works of love and gender. The feelings that the museum and his art evoke can, simply put, be unsettling. But, after all, a deep self-awareness and conception of the human experience can also be quite unsettling. Across from the Munch Museum is the staggeringly large Oslo Opera House. Oslo is a city with proof that you can combine both classical and modern architecture in your cityscape 
and still have a distinct form of character. A great example of this is behind me at the Oslo National Opera House, Norway. Made almost entirely from white marble and glass, this stylish, postmodern building itself is a public plaza from which you can climb to the top. Beautiful views of the juxtaposition of new and old in the Oslo cityscape, alongside the deep harbor, lush islands, and rolling village-lined hillsides can be seen from atop the marble-slabbed rooftop. A testament to architecture as a form of art, the lobby is adorned with waving wood slats, evoking a feeling of warmth and contrast to the cool exterior. In the northeast of the city, you'll find one of Oslo's many sculpture gardens, Vigiland Sculpture Park. Lush green malls, trails, fountains, and ornate bridges are adorned with dozens of granite sculptures, typically of people, in an old Scandinavian fashion. A lot of Norwegian sculpture work, as well as with the rest of Scandinavia, is smoother and less detailed than in continental Europe, which tends to be more ornate and flamboyant. Speaking of art being found in nearly every corner, Oslo Cathedral is remarkable. Constructed in the 15th century, the wooden ceiling, while not very high, is entirely painted in murals depicting what appear to be the Book of Revelation and is crafted in bold colors of orange, gold, blue, yellow, and green. Golden chandeliers hang throughout, dimly lighting the white plaster walls. The nave smells strongly of burning candles in a cozy, almost nostalgic way. As the signs request, the space is nearly silent, with only the echoes of movement. Back in the city hall, the central atrium is blanketed in friezes from artists Alf Rolfsen and Henrik Sorensen, depicting Norwegian industry. A boring topic, perhaps, but the artwork is just magnificent. Norway is an expensive country to travel to, there's no doubt about it. The food, likewise, can be pretty pricey. I tried to blend some of the cheaper local snacks with the pricier delicacies, more indicative of traditional Norwegian culture. Here are a few of my favorites. Brown cheese. So brown cheese is a Norwegian staple, and you can find it on several dishes. My breakfasts nearly every morning in Oslo included multiple slices of tasteful brown cheese between two thick bread roll slices filled with nuts and raisins. Brown cheese can even be found on waffles, and we'll get to that in a bit. Smoked Salmon At a small restaurant with a nautical atmosphere tucked away into a hole in the wall called Firet Mar and Rik, I tried my first Norwegian smoked salmon. Served alongside a boiled egg, moist and fluffy brown bread, mayonnaise and butter, Norwegian smoked salmon was absolutely delicious, with an incredibly strong taste. Norwegian Meatballs Found at Café Shoulder, Norwegian meatballs are huge and dense, and when coupled with smoky meatball sauce, are decadent. This traditional Norwegian dish was served alongside mushy peas, which, eh, and potatoes with lingonberry sauce. The closest comparison of which I can find is cranberry sauce. Norwegian waffle with brown cheese. At the Norwegian Folk Museum, I tried a dish that frankly took me by surprise a Norwegian waffle. Norwegian waffles are traditionally shaped like a heart and are incredibly soft, and in this case, topped with brown cheese. This is a surprisingly delicious pairing. Runsticker med rekasalat. I really tried to pronounce that, I promise. I also tried this at the Norwegian Folk Museum, and it's a typical Norwegian sandwich on a bread roll topped in a shrimp salad blend that the kind lady behind the counter told me was the best representation of a typical Norwegian lunch. I can see why. It was fresh and light. The Oslo experience is a magical one, full of evocative art, a deep sense of place, dramatic landscapes, icy water, and warm people. The time I spent in Oslo doesn't even scratch the surface of all there is to experience. One day, perhaps, I'll return in the autumn or winter to experience an Oslo blanketed in snow, where ski lifts, icy fjords, and glittering northern lights await. 
I hope that today, however, I was able to bring you to Oslo imaginatively through all five senses in a way that makes you feel as if you've walked the rocky island shores of the humble Norwegian capital too. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.